got an engine in um, a couple weeks ago for a uh, FL250 1984, better known as the Honda Odyssey. Anybody that doesn't know what an Odyssey is, it's pretty neat. It's like a little miniature slash between a dune buggy and a quad, and they're really fun to ride. Uh, we took the engine apart. We found a couple of problems. Uh, you can get almost all the parts, but one big problem is the connecting rod. I was able to access one of these on eBay, but I would be damned if I'm paying $250 for a connecting rod. So we started doing a little research. Um, LA Sleeve is a really good company. We get a lot of stuff from them. And in their catalog, they have a rod spec page. So what I did is I measured all the dimensions on this rod and recorded all the dimensions. And then I started looking through all the different specs that they had for connecting rods to see if maybe it was the same as something else. Um, because this rod is not available. And what I found was a rod that matched every single dimension except for C, which is the length. The center to center length of this rod is 121 millimeters. What I did find was this. This rod is 125 millimeters center to center. So what we're going to build here, I got a Pro-X rod, and what we're going to build is a Honda Odyssey with a 4 millimeter long rod. Okay, first thing, we've already disassembled the crankshaft, so the first thing we're going to do is press the pin out of the other half, and then we're going to get the half cleaned up. actually bent, I don't think you can see it, but um, it took some pretty good shocks in here, and this, this translated over to the, the crank web, I don't know if you can see it, but I got a little, I got a raised spot on both halves of this, so what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to grind that down and level, so when we put our new thrust washers in, it doesn't eat it right up, so just, that's pretty easy to do. Try and stay off of this surface, there's really nothing wrong with it, it's just a burr, so I'm just going to relieve the burr. trying to do is get it get it level almost like chamfering it it feels pretty good so a sandpaper roll on here just buff it up a little bit And that's it. I'll do the same thing to the other side. We got rid of the burrs on the uh, both webs at the top. Everything here feels nice and flat. Uh, next step is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to media blast these. I usually don't do these to crankshafts, but um, this is pretty old and pretty nasty. So rather than just wire brush it, which is what we usually do, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and media blast these and get these cleaned up. Okay, we got our got our crankshaft hats out of the uh, media blaster, and the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to assemble it.
not gonna. I have a pretty, uh, pretty good crankshaft jig to do this stuff, but I'm not gonna use it on this one just because it's so beefy. Uh, I'm gonna go old school with this, and I'll, I'll show you how we do this. I'm, I'm basically just gonna knock this thing around with a hammer to get it lined up. Initially, I've got it set up to where it's just kind of hanging here, sitting here, and all I do is bring that camera in this way. Make walk right in with it. All I do is I take a square and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to touch. And as you can see, there's a huge space here. This is not pressed in, so this can be knocked around. And the square is touching the side of the crank. So what I'll do is I'll take this brass hammer and I'm just going to tap on that side of the crank until I get this you know, pretty close to being lined up. And I can get these real close by eye. At that point, I'm going to press it in about half the distance, put it in bench centers, check it and knock it around a little bit back and forth. This is how I do Harley Davidson cranks, by the way. Okay, I knocked this crank around off camera, but um, again, there's really no, no pressure on this. I'm just using a brass hammer to move it back and forth. This part of the crankshaft is machined as well as this. So, by taking this star at square, putting it against the machined surfaces, you can see that I've closed this gap that was, you know, at one point a quarter of an inch. It's, it's almost nothing now. And uh, I'm going to press this together about halfway and then do adjustments. All right, you pull the crank out of the press. Um, this side is pressed completely in. This side is pressed in halfway, so this is the part we're going to move. If we have to move anything, we're going to move the light press side. What you do is you rotate the crank, and you bring your indicators on its lowest side to zero. You do it on both sides, and then you just watch, and they're going to tell you a little story. If both indicator needles increase at the same time, that means that the crankshaft is like this. It either has to get pulled in on one side or pushed out on another. If the needles move, if one goes up and increases and the other one goes down, that means that the crankshaft has to be twisted. It has to go this way or this way. Because let's face it, I can put this thing together any way I want. And these needles are just telling me what adjustments I have to, be, uh, have to make. So looking at this, zero and zero, and as I roll it around, I see this side increasing. This is kind of coming behind it, so it's, it's got a couple of little problems here. But this crank is closer than two of your hairs right now, but it's definitely not close enough for me. I can get this a lot better. So what I'm going to do is adjust this side this way, and that's going to align the crankshaft this way. And that's the first part of the problem, so I'm going to correct that first. Okay, from the bench centers, we identified this as being the high side. And uh, again, I have jigs I can do this with, but a lot of people do it like this still to this day. And just, you know, for this exercise, I'll show you, you know, the, the old-fashioned way to do it. Um, I'm actually going to strike this with this. It's a copper hammer. Um, if you use anything other than copper, you're probably going to start divoting things up. But notice this is the part of the crank half that's only pressed in halfway. I'm just going to give it a shot. It's pretty simple. That's it. All right, I adjusted the crankshaft. I hate to say I, hate to say I hit it, but smacked it around, whatever. Um, but I adjusted it, and I successfully have run out on this side, uh, one and a half thousandths, and about the same on this side. Now remember, the needles move in opposite directions, one going down and one going up. That means the crankshaft is still twisted. So it looks like it's going to need maybe one more shot, but I am going to do the final assembly. I'm going to press it all together and then correct whatever misalignment is there at the end after it's been pressed together. Because um, when I press this together, it's going to move. It doesn't make, you, you want to get it close at this point, but you don't want to make it perfect because it's just going to move when you press it together anyway. So judging from this, this web has to move this way. This is high on the indicator, so I'm going to hit this web this way. This one is low. I'm going to leave that alone, and this is still my loose side, but I'm going to go ahead and finish pressing this together. Okay, we're finished with our assembly. We did the final press, putting the crankshaft together, and um, knocked it around a little bit. And again, we, we don't do all of these cranks like this. I have fixtures for this, but 
Um, I like to do them like this once in a while. It keeps me uh, keeps me sharp. And you know, if you guys don't have fixtures, it's definitely doable. You got to have a lot of patience. Set of bench centers with clean holes on the end. Uh, worst thing to do is pound a crankshaft out. But uh, here's what we ended up with. And what I'm measuring is approximately five tenths, so a half a thousandth on the left side, and this side is dead straight. Um, I'm going to stop right here. I'm not even going to try to get this thing any closer. This crank is perfect. Thanks for watching, and keep your eyes out for more videos from KennelConnorRacing.com.